The opposition wins, but will they be allowed to govern? Thailand's Move Forward Party's progressive agenda brought them to victory, but could it now hold them back as they operate under rules the military government created? When will Thais see their new government formed, and will it be done without protest? I'm Andrea Sankey, and today's newsmaker is Thailand. Thai voters sent a strong message to the ruling government last month, saying, we don't support you. Buoyed by massive youth support behind its anti-establishment, anti-monopoly agenda, Pita Lim Jaronrat's Move Forward Party was the surprise winner of the election. The main opposition party, led by former billionaire Prime Minister Thaksin Shinawat's daughter, finished second. Now, together, they dealt a crushing blow to conservative parties backed by a royalist military that's controlled the government since a 2014 coup. The sentiment of the era has changed, and it's right. It was the right timing that uh, people have uh, been through enough of lost decade in the past decade, and today is a new day, and hopefully it's full of bright uh, sunshine of hope going forward. But amazingly, despite the resounding victory, it's still uncertain who the next leader will be. That's because the military junta rewrote the constitution to ensure they maintain a huge say in who can lead, whether or not they win the popular vote. Now, neither opposition party won an outright majority of seats needed to form a government, so the Move Forward Party has created an eight-party coalition that promises to draft a new constitution and end monopolies. But with more political negotiations ahead, many ties fear the military may try to block the winning parties from taking office. And just this week, PETA played down an effort to disqualify him over a stock ownership issue, insisting he violated no rules and that rivals were determined to keep him from the top job. I think a military coup for them would be the last resort. We might see some manipulation, some subversion, short of a military coup. We've seen party dissolutions in the past, disqualifications of uh, politicians, and, you know, Kun Pita, leader of Move Forward, is under a charge, uh, could be disqualified. So we might see something like that. But if there's uh, subversion of the result from yesterday, which is a very strong mandate, uh, we could very well see some social unrest as a result. So where is Thailand headed now as this eight-party opposition coalition tries to form a government? Well, joining me now to discuss that is Pong Thep Tepkanjana. He is the former deputy prime minister and former justice minister of, of Thailand for Thaksin Shinawat's now disbanded Thai Rock Party. Thank you so much for being with us on the Newsmakers. You know how it feels to be at odds with the military leaders in Thailand and move forward won this election with a platform that is completely contrary to what the military would want. It's been three weeks now. It could be another month. But will we see Pita Lim Jaronrat become prime minister? Uh, the opposition, uh, including Move Forward Party led by Lim Jaronrat, uh, won a uh, landslide victory in the election. But the landslide victory in the election uh, does not guarantee that they can form a coalition government. Because not only the elected MPs, 500 of them, there will be 250 appointed senators who will join with the MPs to vote for the prime minister. Right. Uh, uh, we've explained that, I mean, they can effectively block, because of the number of senators appointed by the military, they can effectively block this coalition from taking power. Yes. But do you yes, think they because, will? Because you need 376 mm -hmm. votes of the parliamentarians to be elected as the new prime minister. Right now, the coalition parties uh, have 212 MPs. Right. So that is not enough. They need about uh, 64 more votes, which can come from MPs from non-coalition parties or from senators. 
Mm. So, so if, if if they add some parties into their coalition, for example, if they add Pum Jai Thai Party into their coalition, they will not need the votes from senators at all. Okay. But if they do not invite additional parties, they will have to rely on the votes of senators, which is quite unlikely. Yeah, it's going to be difficult. That they can get very difficult. So, I mean, do you think they're man they will manage? Uh, will they win this battle? What is, what is your instinct telling you? Uh, my instinct is that if they do not invite additional parties to their coalition, it is unlikely that they will gain enough votes to be elected a prime minister. Okay, and then where would that leave the, the Thai public? I mean, how angry would they be? They vote for a party uh, with, you know, a landslide, actually. It shocked a lot of Thailand. Um, and if that is somehow derailed, that victory is basically taken down because of laws from, you know, the 2017 constitution yeah. that the military itself instituted, mm -hmm. how will the public respond? Okay, the public will be very angry with that. But for the coalition parties, they can try PITA once, twice, or three times. After that, they have to reconsider whether to propose other nominees uh, from that coalition. There'll be other three nominees who are qualified to be elected PM from the Per Thai party. Hmm. Otherwise, they can invite additional party. For example, they can invite the Democrats. Right. But they can invite Kum uh, Jai Thai because they will know after the voting how many votes they need more. Okay. Let me ask you this, though. Proposing to overturn the Les Majeste laws, that appealed to voters, uh, but not to, obviously, the senators who, who could prevent the opposition from taking power. Do you think move forward will have to let that go, even if it was a pillar of their campaign, in order to perhaps win these senators over? They can hardly disregard uh, their policy campaign on the less majesty law. And right now, even within the coalition parties, uh, the coalition parties agree that the amendment to the Lesser Majesty law will not be the policy of the new government. But move forward, we'll just introduce the bill on their own. Okay. I'd like to thank you, really, Pong Tep, Tep Kanjana, so much for joining us on this edition of the Newsmakers. Great to have you. My pleasure. Let's broaden out the discussion now and welcome two new guests from Bangkok, Kasit Piromya. He is Thailand's former foreign minister from Copenhagen. Shini Pimlapas, she's a senior researcher and spokesperson for the Talai Association. Thanks so much both for uh, being with me. Shini, let me start with you and uh, yeah. get your take on my previous question, actually. I mean, will Pita become prime minister and how will the public respond if he doesn't? Okay, he has to be. I mean, he got the majority. So in the normal democratic country, he already be a prime minister. But I know that we have the 250 appoint, military appointed senators that we waiting for them to vote for him or not. But then have to have to remember the people that went for election on the 14th of May in Thailand this time, they voted for hope and they voted with anger. So the, if you not follow the major, majority of people, you know what is gonna come next for the Thai society and Thailand as a whole. But I want to uh, t tell the theater something. So um, I would say uh, both sides have to be compromised. Mm. We, Thai people and the pro-democratic party we have already compromised by playing in the game that you created with the rule you have written, with the referees you have appointed, 
and we won. Now it's time for you to show your compromise by voting for the majority, voting for the candidate from the Move Forward Party, Pita, to be a prime minister. Then the country can move forward because right now we're stuck in the middle of nowhere. Okay, Kasi, do you agree and do you think the government will compromise as, as Shinny is proposing? Mark. My point is that the the 250 senators, they were appointed by the generals who staged the coup d'etat in 2014. So they have to have the loyalty towards their, what you call their master, the generals. But now with the result of the elections on the 14th of May and the overwhelming votes of the people, 25 million votes voted for the opposition, mm -hmm. for the progressive voices of Thai political entity, then the loyalty of the 250 senators must be shifted from their loyalty to the generals to the 25 million people who voted for the uh, move forward and for the per Thai. There is no other way, because if they were to do otherwise by not voting for Kun Pita to become the next prime minister of Thailand, then 250 senators are running head on against the 25 million voters. And what does that mean to you, running head on? Will we just see, you know, the streets turn to chaos? Because you're right, both of you have said people will be, be very surprised. angry. You wouldn't be surprised. I do not be surprised. You know, people will be very angry. The young people will be uh, very angry. And this is for the generals, for the conservative political parties and conservative groups in Thailand to think twice, mm. you know, whether they want to meet the people, 220, uh, 25 million votes, voters head on. They have to think of the larger picture. And I do agree with the professors that there must be a politics of compromise, one step back and let the democratization process of Thailand move forward because the people have willed that the two of the opposition parties will now become the coalition government of Thailand. Okay. Shinny, mm -hmm. if then move forward, forms this government, Peter becomes prime minister, how much could formally change in Thailand? Would we see the establishment or the military actually pushed out? So that is the work, it's a long work that the Move Forward Party and the coalition have to do. They need to, first of all, they need to change the foundation of the country, which is the constitution, which is drafted by the military when they uh, had the coup data almost nine years ago. That's the first thing that they need to do. So to, to get Thailand back on track of democracy. So that's the first thing they have to do. And then, you know, prevent the other coup that have might happen. But by the way, for the old establishment, you need to understand this time is different. PITA and Move Forward Party, they gain popularity across political colors and across cl class of society of Thailand. Mm. This is different than the previous time that you did dissolve the party, dissolve the party or kick off the previous prime minister. This time is different, I would say. Okay. Uh, Kasit, I have to ask you because, as, and I asked before, you know, a major platform for the Move Forward Party was to actually address the very controversial Les Majeste laws that prevent any Thai person from dare criticizing uh, the king or the royal family. That seemed to I be a popular, yeah, it seemed to be a popular platform to stand on, but now Move Forward has gone a bit quiet about it. What do you think will happen on that front? Might they have to stand back on that promise to the public because it could prove their undoing against the military powers? I think when the eight coalition, uh, the would-be coalition partner met on the 22nd of May and subsequent meetings and so on, they came out with a 23 points, what sort of a joint manifesto. But the question of the less majesty law did not get the consensus, mm. but the move forward will be able as an individual party to, to introduce the issue into the parliament. 
So the issue of less majesty law or article 112 of the criminal code and so on will not go away from the parliament or from the consciousness of the Thai society. And, and it's incumbent upon the move forward from now on to be to come out and explain to the public what do they think about the shortcomings of the uh, Article 112. Okay. It's for them to explain to people. That's the first point. Second point is every country has a law that protects the head of state, whether a president or a king. So Thailand can study and compare mm. all the laws and see what would be more relevant and reduce the tension, the conflict, and the confrontation mm. in Thailand based on the current Thai Less Majesty Law. Okay, so Kasi, very quickly, I mean, if, if you think move forward will indeed take power uh, because the military is aware that people will revolt if, if they do not, how dramatically do you expect Thailand to change under this opposition leadership? I think it has been a turning point with the victory of the move forward, unprecedented. It had, I think, destroyed uh, all the, I saw money politics, mafia politics, family, dynasties, and so on. The people have voted for the move forward directly without any interference from the political mafia, for money politics, and so on. So it is the greatest turning point in Thai political history since 1932. And I don't mm. think that anything could arrest these very well, fundamental changes in the democratization processes of Thailand. That I'm is, very positive that we will move forward like Japan, Taiwan, or South Korea. Very encouraging to hear. Ashini, let me ask you, though, I mean, as for the immediate term, really, we have this eight-party coalition now, uh, and the two leading parties. Tell me, how much do Putai and Move Forward actually get along? Are they compatible in a coalition? Would they be able to rule effectively? They have no choice but to get along. So I don't know what their intention or whatever, but they have no choice. They have to get along. They need to support the move forward party to try to be a prime minister. And that's what Pertai already said a million times that what they have to do. And if in the future, no matter what happened, they have to have a discussion within the coordination what to do next. Hmm. I want to go back quickly with you, Shini, to the, to the Les Majestés laws, because there's another yeah. angle to it that I wanted to ask you specifically about. Why do people want it changed? What was in that that, that offended, I mean, particularly, I guess, the youth? And does it have something to do with the relatively new king and perhaps his behavior in, in certain cases that has outraged uh, certain members of the Thai public? Well... It has to change because, I mean, we call ourselves a constitutional monarchy. Mm -hmm. So, and this law that they propose, they mean a move forward party propose, also with the youth wanted to to amend it just to make it to be a normal, uh, emergency law for the con uh, con um, constitutional monarchy. For example, you you shouldn't be in jail up to fifteen years. You. Sh it shouldn't be anyone that complain you with the Article 112. So, for example, these two things need to be changed in the Article 112. So, it's nothing that too extreme at all. It's just to make this law to be normal as a constitutional monarchy country. Okay. And I know, Kasit, uh, you fundamentally agree with that, correct? Well, the other thing that I would like to add is that in the present constitution, Article 6, does stipulate very clearly the protection of the of the king or the institution of the monarchy, and I don't think that we need any uh, what you call another separate law. It's already embedded in the constitution, and one has to go back and relook and reread Article Six of the present constitution. And if anything were to be done and so on, some addition or to make it more clear and so on. So I, I, I think that we, we have to start with the Constitution, and then we can say whether we still need a separate or a sort of organic law, you know, in mm. support of the Article 6 of the present Constitution. Okay. Uh, you know, I mentioned before, Kasit, that your outlook seemed 
rather optimistic, and we do hope you are right, because the reality is that these are militarily appointed senators, and you have election rules that are written by the military, but it's, it's interesting because the military did take over by force. So why is it in their interest to have these fair and transparent elections uh, if they really don't have the intention of respecting the result through some sort of political maneuvering under these new rules? So it wouldn't be, they couldn't quite, you know, no one could call it necessarily a coup in this sense because they can now say, oh, we have these rules to follow. But why would they have this election then? Because they thought that their parties, you know, under the leadership of General Prayut and under the leadership of General Pravit, would have uh, won or have, I think, a lot of vote, more than 100 mm -hmm. seats in the House of Representatives. And combined with the 250 seats in the Senate, they would have uh, continued the power and so on. But I think that expectation have come to naught. They were soundly defeated by the move forward and by the per tide. They overlooked the sentiment, the aspiration, and the intelligence of the young generation and the urban middle class, whether in, ba in Bangkok or in uh, various provinces and so on. We, mm -hmm. we are a changing society. It's no more a sort of a traditionalist, you know, and uh, go to politics uh, under, I think, money politics and mafia and all of this. It's a new generation where social media has come to, to the fore and where substance in the political campaign matter more than rhetorics, you know, and mm. nationalism and all of this and so on. Okay. The game has changed dramatically and completely. Yeah, That's Shini, why I'm optimistic. Right. Shinny, do you agree that the military may have just been out of touch in, in really thinking uh, that they could, they could win? Yeah. That's why they, they let this election to be, because they thought that all the things that they plan, all the game, all the referees, all the rules, they thought that they could win, but they lost. Right. So now they just need to accept it. But I, I want to point out one thing. Senators, it's not probably the only thing that we concern, you know. The winning of the Move Forward Party gives Thai people a new hope. But Thai people also started to concern on how the empire strike back. You know, they have plenty of tools on their table that they can use, even though to prevent or allow Pita to be a prime minister. And they can still use that tools afterward, you know, to take him down. Okay. Twofold final question for both of you. When do you think we will see a new government formed? And will Taksin Shinwat return to Thailand as a result and perhaps re-enter politics? Shinny, go ahead. With the timeline, you know, uh, the ele election committees has maximum 60 days to announce, to confirm the election mm -hmm. result, which they can do today if they want to, but I mean, they probably use the maximum 60 days to do. So, uh, and then that means in the middle of July that the confirmed election result, and then the parliament will to, to open, and the election of the prime minister would have probably be in the middle, in the beginning of August. So that is the first battle between the lower house and the upper house to vote for the prime minister. Okay. okay? And the questions about uh, Kun Thaksin, if he return or not, by the way. He has every right to return to Thailand. He's a Thai citizen. No, no matter what, what he has done, he has every right to return to Thailand. And he actually insisted to return before the forming of the new government, which means probably next month. That's what the last time we, he spoke to the, mm -hmm. to the public. Oh, okay. And I, I want him to return, actually. Okay. Kalsit? Well, on, on the first point, there is a time frame according to the constitution and the election law and so on. So we will have to have a government by the month of August. Okay, that's the first point. As to the case of Kun uh, Thaksin, well, he, I agree with, with the professor that he, he, as a Thai citizen, he can return to Thailand at any time. But this time when he returns, there are, I think, jail terms and a lot of court cases awaiting him. Will he come? 
uh, can return to Thailand and can, can he avoid the judicial processes and so on. This is something for him to, to explain to the public. But I would like to welcome him back to Thailand as a fellow Thai uh, citizen. Okay. Unfortunately, we're going to have to end it there. That's all the time we have for this edition of the Newsmakers. I'd like to thank both of my panelists so much for being with us. Great to have you and our viewers, of course, for joining us as well. Remember, you can follow us on Twitter and do be sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel. I'm Andrea Sankey. We'll see you next time.